for those of us that run an e-commerce store, the most important thing of all, obviously, is to collect the cash. You get paid. So let's have a look at what are some of the most efficient ways uh, to receive money through your site. If, if you're thinking about setting up a store or a donation system or a uh, enrollment system or whatever system it is to collect the coin, uh, you need the most efficient way to do that. We've been involved in uh, lots of different projects over the years and it's not necessarily uh, one size fits all. There's a whole bunch of options there. Let's start with uh, one of the first and most popular ways uh, to pay online and that's with PayPal. Um, everyone knows that that's fairly straightforward and easy to switch on. In fact, my wife's uh, best friend, uh, she will not pay for anything online unless there's an ability to pay with PayPal. Do you know why? Because of convenience. She doesn't have to open her purse to get a credit card out, to put type the numbers in the, the credit card detail. It's just click, click, click. Yeah, I'm in my PayPal account, I'm paying, uh, and I'm back on the site, and happy days, I've got my product in the mail ready to go. So it's really critical to uh, think about that, but not everyone wants to use PayPal, and the reason why is because if a user is on the site, they choose PayPal, and you're on your, um, your shopping cart page, or your shopping cart, <laughs> you're on a shopping cart page on your website. Now, when they're about to hit pay with PayPal, and you get directed across to um, the PayPal web page. So they actually leave your website, do some stuff over here related to the payment, and then end up back on uh, like a thank you page. So there's lots of steps to this process and those steps can actually go wrong. Uh, we don't want them to go wrong. We want a, a nice smooth process. Uh, the whole user experience needs to flow. PayPal doesn't necessarily allow it to flow, although it's very convenient for a lot of people. Uh, some people also think there's a security risk with uh, PayPal, albeit uh, it's, it's been in the market now for so long, it's actually really quite solid and a lot of people use it. So it's a, it's a trusted brand and uh, very usable. So what are the next options? So for those businesses that want to take it to uh, the next level, say you're not entering and you're doing a lot of transactions, PayPal can actually be quite expensive. The transaction costs are quite high. So the next option is to uh, partner, get a, a merchant ID with a bank, your bank, whether it's ANZ, uh, Combank, wh whoever that might be, uh, Westpac, to uh, apply for a merchant ID and uh, use a payment gateway. So what is a payment gateway? So, so the user is on your site, they're on your shopping cart page, and they're about to pay. In that page, there's a credit card entry uh, fields here. The user fills in the fields and instantaneously it goes to a hidden system that sits at the back that no one really ever sees. It just looks like the page is loading or going somewhere else to, to process. It'll go, you know, hey, processing your, your payment. It's actually going to a gateway. So the job of the gateway is to check the validity of the credit card details to ensure that the payment, so it's fraud detection, it does a whole bunch of really serious things. Uh, so they're all PCI compliant, there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, that uh, they are responsible for that you don't really need to know. All you need to know is that the money goes into, passes through the gateway, the gateway or uh, checks and balances and then the next day usually deposits uh, that money in the bank account. So the money is not directly to your bank but it's, it might as well be. Some banks offer a gateway service. This uh, may be, uh, and banks want to control this because there's a transaction cost related to that as well. Um, so. Why is, this, uh, why is this good? Because the user experience is smooth, uh, they don't leave the page, 
uh, there's less risk for uh, transactions to go awry, it's efficient, uh, the costs are, are lower than uh, your other third party PayPal solutions, but you have to go through the process uh, to get a merchant ID. Merchant IDs, uh, you may need to hold some security for the bank and they might, might want to actually do that. In a project I did recently for a not-for-profit, uh, they actually uh, were doing an event. There was gonna be a couple of hundred grand flow through the account just for a period of time, a short period of time, uh, you know, to pay uh, registration fees and that sort of thing. So the bank wanted uh, the secretary of uh, the organization to put his house up as, uh, as a guarantee uh, as a risk control. So we really didn't want to go down that process. So what do we do? Uh, we used, within a day, uh, we switched on a, a new service called uh, Stripe. So Stripe is like a mix of PayPal and a payment gateway. Um, it is a third party tool, it sits in between. So same, same thing applies. Uh, you're on your cart page on your site. There might be a little, hey, uh, pay with processing uh, via Stripe. And it acts as a gateway or a gateway style of transaction in the background. So the users don't leave your site. So the user experience is actually really smooth. And next day or uh, uh, two days later, uh, the cash lands in your bank. It's actually really efficient. Stripe is awesome. Uh, it was very, very quick, especially if you're using uh, standard tools like uh, your Magento, your WordPress, uh, your WooCommerce kind of tools. Uh, there's uh, plugins for Stripe that are actually really easy to use. And uh, we were processing transactions within 15 minutes of turning it on. Absolutely brilliant and worth having a look at. So that's an overview of the three different styles of uh, payment processes some people prefer some for others and it's a you know it's a cost benefit of uh, transaction fees volume um, how comfortable you feel with security and uh, just usability and user flow on the site so that's payment gateways